Book 11, Chapters 12 to 21. How then shall I respond to him who asks, What was God doing before he made heaven and earth? I do not answer, as a certain one is reported to have done facetiously, shrugging off the force of the question. He was preparing hell, he said, for those who pry too deep. It is one thing to see the answer. It is another to laugh at the questioner. And for myself I do not answer these things thus. More willingly would I have answered, I do not know what I do not know. Then cause one who asked a deep question to be ridiculed, and by such tactics gain praise for a worthless answer. Rather I say that thou, our God, art the creator of every creature, and if in the term heaven and earth every creature is included, I make bold to say further, before God made heaven and earth, he did not make anything at all. For if he did, what did he make unless it were a creature? I do indeed wish that I knew all that I desire to know to my prophet, as surely as I know that no creature was made before any creature was made. Chapter 13 But if the roving thought of someone should wander over the images of past time, and wonder that thou, the Almighty God, the all-creating and all-sustaining, the architect of heaven and earth, didst for ages unnumbered abstain from so great a work before thou didst actually do it, let him awake and consider that he wonders at illusions. For in what temporal medium could the unnumbered ages that thou didst not make pass by since thou art the author and creator of all the ages? Or what periods of time would those be that were not made by thee? Or how could they have already passed away if they had not already been? Since, therefore, thou art the creator of all times, if there was any time before thou madest heaven and earth, why is it said that thou wast abstaining from working? For thou madest that very time itself, and periods could not pass by before thou madest the whole temporal procession. But if there was no time before heaven and earth, how then can it be asked, What was thou doing then? For there was no then when there was no time. Nor dost thou precede any given period of time by another period of time else thou wouldst not foresee all periods of time. In the eminence of thy ever-present eternity, thou precedest all times past, and extendest beyond all future times, for they are still to come. And when they have come, they will be past. But thou art always the self-same, and thy years shall have no end. Thy years neither go nor come, but ours both go and come, in order that all separate moments may come to pass. All thy years stand together as one, since they are abiding. Nor do thy years past exclude the years to come, because thy years do not pass away. All these years of ours shall be with thee, when all of them shall have ceased to be. Thy years are but a day, and thy day is not recurrent, but always to-day. Thy to-day yields not to to-morrow, and does not follow yesterday. Thy to-day is eternity. Therefore thou didst generate the co-eternal, to whom thou didst say, This day I have begotten thee. Thou madest all time, and before all times thou art and there was never a time when there was no time. Chapter 14 There was no time, therefore, when thou hadst not made anything, because thou hadst made time itself. And there are no times that are co-eternal with thee, because thou dost abide forever. 
but if times should abide, they would not be times. For what is time? Who can easily and briefly explain it? Who can even comprehend it in thought or put the answer into words? Yet is it not true that in conversation we refer to nothing more familiarly or knowingly than time? And surely we understand it when we speak of it. We understand it also when we hear another speak of it. What then is time? If no one asks me, I know what it is. If I wish to explain it to him who asks me, I do not know. Yet I say with confidence that I know that if nothing passed away, there would be no past time. And if nothing were still coming, there would be no future time. And if there were nothing at all, there would be no present time. But then how is it that there are the two times, past and future, when even the past is now no longer, and the future is now not yet. But if the present were always present, and did not pass into past time, it obviously would not be time, but eternity. If, then, time present, if it be time, comes into existence only because it passes into time past, how can we say that even this is, since the cause of its being is that it will cease to be. Thus, can we not truly say that time is only as it tends toward non-being? Chapter 15 And yet we speak of a long time and a short time, but never speak this way except of time past and future. We call a hundred years ago, for example, a long time past. In like manner we should call a hundred years hence a long time to come. But we call ten days ago a short time past, and ten days hence a short time to come. But in what sense is something long or short that is non-existent? For the past is not now, and the future is not yet. Therefore let us not say, it is long. Instead, let us say of the past, it was long, and of the future, it will be long. And yet, O Lord, my light, shall not thy truth make mockery of man even here? For that long time past, was it long when it was already past, or when it was still present? For it might have been long when there was a period that could be long, but when it was past, it no longer was. In that case, that which was not at all could not be long. Let us not, therefore, say, time past was long, for we shall not discover what it was that was long, because since it is past, it no longer exists. Rather let us say that time present was long, because when it was present it was long, for then it had not yet passed on, so as not to be, and therefore it still was in a state that could be called long. But after it passed, it ceased to be long simply because it ceased to be. Let us therefore, O human soul, see whether present time can be long, for it has been given you to feel and measure the periods of time. How then will you answer me? Is a hundred years when present a long time? But first, see whether a hundred years can be present at once. For if the first year in the century is current, then it is present time, and the other ninety and nine are still future. Therefore they are not yet. But then, if the second year is current, one year is already past, the second present, and all the rest are future. And thus, if we fix on any middle year of this century as present, those before it are past, those after it are future. Therefore a hundred years cannot be present all at once. Let us see then whether the year that is now current can be present. For if its first month is current, 
then the rest are future. If the second, the first is already past, and the remainder are not yet. Therefore the current year is not present all at once, and if it is not present as a whole, then the year is not present. For it takes twelve months to make the year from which each individual month, which is current, is itself present one at a time, but the rest are either past or future. Thus it comes out that the time present, which we found was the only time that could be called long, has been cut down to the space of scarcely a single day. But let us examine even that, for one day is never present as a whole, for it is made up of twenty-four hours, divided between night and day. The first of these hours has the rest of them as future and the last of them has the rest as past. But any of those between has those that preceded it as past, and those that succeed it as future, and that one hour itself passes away in fleeting fractions. The part of it that has fled is past, what remains is still future. If any fraction of time be conceived that cannot now be divided even into the most minute momentary point, this alone is what we may call time present. But this flies so rapidly from future to past that it cannot be extended by any delay. For if it is extended, it is then divided into past and future. But the present has no extension whatever. Where, therefore, is that time which we may call long? Is it future? Actually, we do not say of the future it is long, for it has not yet come to be, so as to be long. Instead, we say it will be long. When will it be? For since it is future, it will not be long, for what may be long is not yet. It will be long only when it passes from the future which is not as yet and will have begun to be present so that there can be something that may be long. But in that case, time present cries aloud in the words we have already heard that it cannot be long.